next what we're going to do is move from uh, kind of modeling overall aggregate figures into the future, which is what we're showing over here, to uh, getting unit economic insights. So again, what we've done here is we now have the ability to forecast uh, total customers into the indefinite future. We've got the ability to forecast total revenues into the indefinite future. Uh, but we can also get these diagnostic measures of customer health, like customer lifetime value and post acquisition value, uh, after we make a few additional assumptions. Uh, the first is uh, we need a discount rate. This is supposed to be the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, we also need a variable margin. <coughs> this is, again, to acknowledge the fact that customer lifetime value is a variable profit measure, not a revenue measure. And we need customer acquisition cost for each of our cohorts. So we're just going to focus on uh, the first six cohorts uh, without loss of generality. So this is just converting our annual discount rate into a quarterly discount rate. We're taking the parameter estimates that we got from the, the previous tab. We're using those to generate forecasts over the next 25 calendar quarters. Uh, the total number of customers that are expected to still be alive layer in the revenue per user process and what this is going to give us is the expected revenue per acquired customer by cohort over time in customer time so again we can see over here we get all these blanks because this is all in calendar time I acquired cohort number six in the sixth calendar quarter so they didn't they didn't exist until the sixth quarter in the sixth quarter, 100% of the customers were alive, and then, you know, because of customer attrition, uh, the figures go down from there. Here we're seeing numbers all the way in this leftmost column for every single cohort, and the reason why is this is saying uh, in the first quarter, in the really in the initial quarter that birthed the customers, what's the average amount of revenue per customer uh, that we would expect to get from those cohort six customers? So obviously in this initial quarter, everyone is alive. And so we're just getting our revenue per user from every quarter, from every customer. So we know, say, you know, the, the cohort number six, they had an ARPU of 32 bucks in, uh, in the sixth calendar quarter. So because we retained 100% of them, you know, we would expect to generate 32 bucks of revenue from them. Now, if we move one quarter to the right, we know that we've got 80.9% of this cohort that's still with us. For each of the people that are with us, we're going to generate revenue per user of 32.4. So again, if we just take 32.4, multiply it by 80.9, this is going to give us our 26.2 which is what we see over here. So we're just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. And this allows us to kind of compare the monetization trends of each of these cohorts in an apples to apples way. We then scale down these revenue figures to variable profit figures by multiplying each of the revenue figures by the variable margin. And then we just take the net present value. So that's what this is doing right here. It's taking the net present value of all of these cash flows that we see over here at the quarterly discount rate. But note that I'm kind of future valuing it by one period because we know that this uh, cash flow that we uh, obtain in quarter number zero is obtained immediately, not at the end of the first period. So that's just all that's all that's all that that's doing. So what this gives us for every cohort then is its post acquisition value. We then subtract off the acquisition cost. Again, these figures are coming from over here. And that gives us our estimated lifetime value. And then the marketing return on investment is simply CLV divided by CAC. And that's it.